Hands are on. Team two, come on. Here comes he's coming in his chair. An intense scene played out in the Payette National Forest back in May after federal agents shot a homeless man while trying to take him and his family into custody. We want to thank you for joining us for the Sunday News at 10. I'm Carolyn Holly filling in. After the Emmett family became homeless in 2020, they lived on public land throughout southern Idaho until this spring. Law enforcement kept kicking the Roberts off, saying that they were violating federal regulations. But as you saw, the family's final run in with law enforcement ended in chaos, and now they're going after the federal government. So we want to warn you, the video in this story is graphic, and you might find it disturbing. There's the warning right there. Here's Morgan Romero with more. Yeah, and just kind of make sure that we block him in so he can't, you know, we have to be kind of close. Friday, May 19th, 2023, an undercover operation involving several law enforcement officers at a trailhead in the Payette National Forest did not go as planned. Bureau of Land Management and U.S. Forest Service officers were trying to arrest Judy Roberts and her sons Timber and Brooks for unlawfully living on public lands. They were each charged with multiple misdemeanors under the Code of Federal Regulations. Plain clothes officers knocked on the door of the Roberts trailer, asking for a jump start, according to court documents. Timber's moving his vehicle close to ours to get the jumper cables. <laughs> He's in the vehicle, but our guys are on him. In a Forest Service officer's body camera video, you see Timber coming out to help them, followed by officers arresting him. Hands are on. Team two, come on. Hearing Timber's calls for help, his brother Brooks wheeled out in his wheelchair and appeared to point his revolver at the officers. Here comes, he's coming in his chair. You can hear officers fire at least 11 gunshots. The plainclothes officers didn't announce themselves as law enforcement. Brooks wheeled out as carrying a revolver with him, but what he didn't know is there's cops surrounding the whole scene. And so they opened fire, um, fired multiple shots uh, into his body. He was shot repeatedly even after he was defenseless in the mud. He got shot in the back. Brooks survived. I think it's a miracle. But his attorney, Richie Epping, says he's paralyzed from the waist down. I'm sorry. I thought my brother just being attacked. Okay. He gave Thanks me a us. chance to put the gun down. He just got shot. Hey, sir, you were pointing at us. Yeah, you had it out in your hand, man. It is what it is, okay? I didn't know you guys were cops. May 19th was the climax of a three-year clash between the feds and the Roberts. When the family was evicted from their Emmett home during the pandemic, they moved to the Boise National Forest, then BLM land in the desert south of Boise. They ended up trying to survive in what they had left, which was their vehicles. Officials warned them multiple times they were violating the 14-day camping limit in each spot, and they were eventually given tickets and ordered to leave. But the family told officers they had nowhere else to go, that homeless shelters were full. Had Brooks and his family had any other choice but to be where they were, they would have been there. The BLM connected the family with a homeless services agency in Ada County, which put them on a waiting list for permanent supportive housing. The approach that would have worked, could have worked here, was to allow this family to work with services to, to, to find a place to live. According to court filings, during encounters with law enforcement and the public over those years, Timber, specifically, grew more hostile and aggressive. Court documents show he repeatedly threatened violence, saying he would booby trap their site and claimed his family owned the public land they lived on. After being forced off the BLM land in the fall of 2020, they headed up to the popular West Face Trailhead parking lot in the Payette National Forest. So my wife and I and kids have all been coming here for a long time, and it's just a peaceful place to be. But that piece was disturbed April 19th. So I was parked in this pickup. 
when Randy Hickman, who lives in McCall, pulled into the lot to catch up on work. And I see a guy standing outside my vehicle. And he wants something, I don't know what it is, so I opened the door and got out and said, what do you need? Hickman says an irrational, agitated timber cussed at him, told him not to touch their stuff, and demanded he leave. And he walked back over to the Chevy pickup was parked about where that mound of bark is. And he walked to it and picked up a knife off the tailgate. He shook the knife and started back toward me. And that made it pretty easy for me to see that I needed not to be here. Hickman realized Timber was not alone, so he left and called 911. I wanted to make sure that I did everything to clear my conscience that there's nothing more I could do. Two months before, the U.S. Attorney's Office had filed multiple misdemeanor charges against the family for living on BLM and Forest Service lands. A judge ordered they leave the forest, but they didn't. It was obvious to me that something was going to happen here at some point. Court records show the Forest Service claimed the family's actions posed an immediate danger to the community and law enforcement. So they lodged more charges against them and planned the undercover arrests on May 19th. All of them had attorneys that the court had appointed for them. Without any notice to us or to the family, the federal government got an arrest warrants for each member of the family. Why did you guys attack? We didn't attack. You're under arrest because you have a federal arrest warrant, okay? For? For camping and living on the forest for so many years. Okay. We have a court date in August. I know, but we, we were going to explain everything when, when we tried to talk to uh, Timber, okay? But that didn't go the way we wanted it to. While the FBI investigates the shooting, Brooks attorneys filed a $50 million tort claim notice against the feds. The first step toward filing a lawsuit, they say the agencies, quote, needlessly and recklessly shot Brooks as part of a, quote, pointless and wildly dangerous ruse operation. They accuse the feds of illegally targeting Brooks because he was homeless. What would you call this shooting on its face in the way that the that federal agents went about this? It was a reckless and indiscriminate shooting of our client. It's gonna hurt, but it's gonna hurt. We gotta. I gotta stop the blood, okay? The government response to this was counterproductive throughout all of those years, um, and certainly way out of proportion for um, a family trying to survive poverty and homelessness. Morgan Romero, Idaho's News Channel 7. Brooks is now out of the hospital. His attorneys filed new documents in his criminal case last week. They are leaning on the Martin versus City of Boise case in their defense, in which a judge found criminalizing homelessness violates people's Eighth Amendment rights, essentially when people have no other place to go, telling them their alternative is jail is unconstitutional. Judy and Brooks go to trial on their criminal charges November 6, while Timber is in jail after pleading guilty to camping on public lands longer than allowed, threatening, intimidating, or interfering with a forest officer and assaulting a federal officer.